What are some of the attributes of teams that are able to successfully spin their coins? What does it take to, to, to learn how to spin a coin really well? Sure. When we ask teams, what got you to that longest spin? Oftentimes, they're very creative. So they define surface in lots of different ways. They try lifting a tablecloth over the table and trying it on just the bare table surface. They'll run out of the room and try a brushed concrete floor. They'll put a book down or a purse down and try it on lots of different surfaces. So they get as, as creative as they can possibly be about what that definition is of surface. Additionally, they try to run a lot of tests. Um, and just, you have 15 minutes to spin, so, and you can actually get a lot of spins in that time. And so they try as many different things as they possibly can. Additionally, they start to create a theory. Sometimes they don't even know that they've created a theory. Um, so sometimes the theory is around who at this table could be the best spinner, because not everybody is going to be a spinner. And so they'll run tests, and they'll rule out who are the, who are the not so great spinners. And then, we'll go, then they'll go get to the best spinner, and then, then they'll move on to their next theory, which is perhaps the quarter or the nickel or, or one coin over another is going to be a better um, spinning coin. So they'll test out the theory and try to rule out the coins that are not great spinning coins. How much data do they collect? Like, what's enough data for them to decide to, to rule out one surface or one spinner or another? So, well, first, not everybody ends up collecting the data. Ah. Some teams get so into the doing part of the PDSA cycle that they just do, 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 and they're, they're tracking so many spins at the same time that they're not going back and actually creating a prediction and actually tracking their data over time. Mm -hmm. If we were to ask them what was the thing that worked, they probably can't tell us because it wasn't documented. Um, and so they're always, those are the teams that sort of come up short of like, actually, I don't know what worked. Um, but those that actually did document, oftentimes they'll try, they'll, they'll do one run of all the coins or one run of all the spinners, and then they get a hunch of which spinners or which coins are the best, and then they try it multiple times to try and get it reliable. Mm -hmm. um, and those teams that have the longest spinning coins tried one surface multiple times to get the longest spinning. So it might be 10 seconds, and then they try it again and it's 11, they try it again and it's 12, and then they feel really good about the fact that, they, hey, we're, we're consistently at a really high number of seconds. That's the one that's going to be the longest. Excellent. So it sounds like teams that are successful collect a little bit of data, just enough. Yep. Um, and, uh, and enough to, to build our confidence. We mm -hmm. talk about that a lot in, in improvement. We, we want just enough data uh, to get a higher degree of confidence yep. that our change is going to mm -hmm. result in improvement. Exactly. And it just made me think about the importance of asking questions, right? That's what makes us, that's what helps us be creative and helps us build um, uh, good theories is, is we're able to formulate questions. Mm -hmm. Who's the best spinner? You know, which surface is, is going to be best for us? Which coin uh, is, is going to offer the, the longest spin? Mm -hmm. so those, and it allows yeah. us to um, explore an assumption without judgment against that assumption. Yeah. So with one of our teams, somebody was adamant that all those over the age of 50 were going to be the best spinners because they had a chance to spin coins in their childhood, whereas they thought that younger people at the table weren't going to have such great spinning skills. People could have easily looked at him and said, well, that's just a joke. But they actually said, hey, let's test that out. And it actually turned out that those over the age of 50 at the table were the best spinners. And so rather than just ruling out somebody's assumption as that's just an idea, everything's on the table to try out. And suddenly people felt like they belonged, they felt like their ideas were contributing, and it's because it was in the form of, hey, let's, it's a question, let's learn about it. So I know that when you set up the game, when you give people instructions, you give them that PDSA tracker that mm -hmm. you want them to fill out. How much do people actually do that? You can be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably say about 50% of the time. Hmm. That's um, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and we're asking people to do it very quickly. Mm -hmm. So in 15 minutes, you can run 20 different spins. That's, that's an intense amount of tests for a small amount of time. And so to ask people to also be writing down what their prediction is, and like I said, they get so into the game and the doing that they don't stop to make the prediction or don't stop to actually see, did this work or did it not work, and then how are we going to iterate on it? Um, however, when we debrief with them and we talk to them about what, what about in the real world? What if you were to have been running a project, and this is really about improving patients' lives, and then you actually move the dial, 
and your local government or reporter or your leadership team comes to you and says, what was the what was the secret sauce? What was the deciding factor? And you can't give them that answer. There's real implications from that. So you're asking folks to collect a lot of data mm-hmm. um, uh, in a very short period of time. What, how, how do folks manage that? What do they do? So they are continually surprised at how easy it is that we gave them a blank run chart and you're just asking them with a pen and pencil to plot on a run chart. There is nothing that's stopping you from taking that same idea and going home. And you don't have to have Excel or any other type of program to produce a run chart for you. You could start on a piece of paper. And people have that realization a lot of, wow, this is way easier. I have no excuses of why I'm not measuring. So in your experience now, what's the longest spinning coin? You know, that's an interesting point. In the in the situations where we've tested this, which has been in the U.S., so the, remember it's a, a quarter, a dime, a nickel, a penny, generally the longest spinning coin has been about 13 to 15 seconds. I don't know that I've seen something that went higher than 15 seconds, which is interesting because then that's the bounds of the system. That's the limit of how we, far we can go. So if we were to think about we want a system that's going to get us higher than 15 seconds, we would have to look at completely redesigning that system. Changing the surface, maybe changing the coins, putting different spinners in place, um, probably changing the coins, I bet, is probably the biggest redesign piece we would need in that system in order to get it to perform different results. And how often are we trying to get a current system to perform at results higher than it can because we're not actually looking at how do we redesign the system. Mm -hmm. So 